Hey guys, it's Merce. Welcome back to Harpies in the Trees, where I review horror books with supernatural focus. Vlog edition. I wasn't too sure what I wanted to read for this next vlog, but I definitely knew that I didn't want it to be new. I wanted it to be something vintage, something not contemporary. Um, I wanted something, I don't know. Just, that, that's just the mood that I have been feeling as of late. So I chose two vintage books to read that I'm very excited about. First one I've already started, which is the Blackstone Chronicles by John Saul. I have not read John Saul since I was a teenager. So um, I wasn't exactly sure what to expect when I first started reading. And the next one will be The Exorcist. I'm just really feeling a demon-y mood right now. So I haven't gotten too far with this. I got 18 pages in. I didn't read for very long. I started it very, very late at night. Um, but so far, the story is about this asylum that has been abandoned for a while, um, is being torn down to be turned into a mall. And they have this big ceremony in the town and everyone comes to watch like the first, uh, is that like the, the wrecking ball come in and you know do its like ceremonial hit to the building it leaves this like really big big hole um so after this happens there is this story that kind of comes out about one of the patients who was sent to this hospital and it has this uh connection with a doll and this doll ends up at someone's house after the ceremony and that's really how far I've gotten, but it sounds really intriguing. The writing is very good. Um, and I, I'm really curious as to see how it goes. The one thing I am confused about is I can't tell what era this book is taking place in um, because it could be this, the 90s, it could be the 70s. It could even be the 60s possibly, but the way that this book is set up is it's actually, um, a combination of like a serial story that John Stoll had put out. So they're all condensed in this book. Um, so there's the doll and in the shadow of evil, the handkerchief, ashes to ashes, the dragon's flame and twist of fate, the locket. I was definitely getting swept in with the story of the patient and who they were and you know, what happened to lead them up to be put in this place. That was very cool. I love that type of stuff. Like I, I love it. So what's really curious is how this patient's doll, many, many, many years later, um, finds itself suddenly at someone's house. Right after it's been ceremonially whacked with a, with a <laughs> wrecking ball, you know? So it sounds like it's gonna be pretty entertaining. Of course, I'm pretty sure a lot of you already know what this story is about. By the judge of the living and the dead. But if you don't, it is about a little girl who becomes possessed and what happens when she is given an exorcism by a priest. Um, so this is going to be pretty cool. This is the 40th anniversary. I told you guys about that before. Uh, it has like this new character. And so I hope I can point, I hope I can find it. I don't, I don't know. Um, we'll have to see if I can actually locate it. That'll be tricky. But a few of you guys have asked me to read this before, so I am really looking forward to reading this. So maybe we'll get this to this today. Maybe we'll get to it tomorrow. We're just gonna take our time, take it easy. Let's go make some tea and read. Okay, I think we're all set. We got our tea going. We have our candles going. So I'm gonna go ahead and read up till chapter seven, which is about 30 pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and start that. And oh, got into my eye. Um, <laughs> then um, we'll come back and talk. Okay. So I'm up to page 53, chapter seven. Um, a lot has happened. There's a lot of characters um, in the book and it does have like this, uh, 
this chart here of, the, of um, the Connolly family, which is pretty helpful. And it also has this map, which I've actually referenced a few times. I did figure out that it's taking place in the 90s because a cell phone is mentioned, and this was printed in 97, so. <laughs> so now we have this, so now we're kind of getting into the doll and, you know, what its effect is uh, upon the household that it is currently residing. There are some nightmare sequences and we're getting to know um, the people who are in the house. So just know their personalities and kind of like what they're struggling with and what they're worried about and in and, and different aspects of just kind of like their life every day. Um, and they have this daughter, she sees the doll and she really, really wants it. And she's basically going to do almost anything she can to get it. Um, so the, the fervor <laughs> and the thirst that this little girl has for this doll is it's pretty intense and a little creepy, I will admit. <laughs> I'm not one of those people who thinks all dolls are creepy and that if it is a doll, it is creepy or old fashioned porcelain dolls are creepy. It's not scary guys. But like things that most people find creepy, I, I, I like, like I think it's cute or I think it's pretty or I think it's um, comforting and cozy. You know, so it, I guess it's a different thing for me. You can actually buy haunted dolls on eBay. I don't know if it's a thing anymore, but there used to be like um, uh, a lot of auctions where you could like buy buy a haunted candle holder, buy a haunted this, buy a haunted that, you know, and you pay like, I don't know, more than it's worth and then you get it and you had a haunted object. While that story is going on, you know, there's this other story about the asylum. The asylum is going to be torn down and be made into a mall. However, funding now for this project has suddenly went away. So all of the people who are involved, like contractors and bankers and stuff like that, they're like all pretty upset about it. It's a very small town, so all of these people know each other and they seem to be like pretty good business owners in the sense that they are pretty concerned with how their customers and how their townspeople are going to manage this because the asylum was actually going to bring a lot of money and a lot of jobs. It feels like it's going to be fun and entertaining. There's a lot of stuff going on. There is a lot of characters, <laughs> so I hope I can keep them straight. Now I'm going to go ahead and move over to the exorcist. I'm going to, should I start tomorrow or should I read a little bit today? Let's go ahead and read the first chapter. I'm just, I'm just really curious. And then maybe I'll read more tonight before you go to bed. And then uh, tomorrow we can resume and read a little bit more and I can catch you up on um, the first chapter and you know whatever else that I read. Okay, so it is day two, and we just went out to actually go to Ikea. It was so packed. There was all, like a double line outside the, of the building, so I was like, no. But right outside of Ikea, there was a Weihnachtmarkt, which is just kind of like a Christmas market, and they had like some rides and some carnival games to play there. It was really, really cute. Um, so we just decided to run to the art store, get some groceries, and then come back home. So now I am back and I'm going to talk to you about the first, uh, the prologue and the first chapter of The Exorcist. I have some different tea today, the Elixir der Elfen. Um, I totally bought it because there was a, a cute little elf on the cover. <laughs> it's like apple mint and blood orange. It's really, really nice. Okay, mm. I started reading this chapter last night, and the first chapter is actually pretty long. It's it's about 45 pages, so I'm up to page 49 at the moment. So, um, okay, so a lot of thoughts about it actually so far. Uh, the writing style is interesting. It has a kind of a literary feel to it. It, it, there was already like three words 
in this first chapter alone where I was like, I have never even heard of that word before. <laughs> we are with this individual who is in the Middle East and there is some type of artifact that he's found and he is having this overwhelming sense of doom and dread. And then the next chapter is about this woman who's extremely wealthy. She's an actress. She's famous. She has a jaguar. She has like two uh, live-in um, house staff. I don't really know what you uh, would call them, but like they're both from Switzerland. And she has a young daughter, Regan. And so we're learning about this woman, her career, her insecurities, the, the opportunities that she's having. Um, and kind of like her desire to be more involved with the, the films than just being an actress. Um, so she's very, very involved with not only in doing the performance, but also in expressing better ideas um, on how to maybe shoot a certain scene. She's very ambitious. She's in her 30s. And at this point of her life, things are really, really good. She does have a... <laughs> She does have this like conversation with one of her film friends whose name is Dennings, who is an alcoholic, just a raging alcoholic, and is completely inappropriate. How dare you? How dare you? But she's just kind of like taking it. So this was written in the 70s, and there's a lot of 70s sensibilities in that aspect. She also has a really, really close uh, relationship with her daughter. Um, and in this first chapter, we're like seeing that. And then by the end of this first chapter, we are getting, the, it's just the twinkle of the beginning of something weird is going on. And this all begins with an Ouija board that Reagan is playing with. I do find Chris to be not that interesting though. Like I, I'm just really not interested in like her career as an actress and sort of like all of her moments that she has like with her staff at home and you know and how they're not like listening to her or something i don't know i just don't find her to be really compelling at the moment but i have a feeling that, or at least i hope you know her her character is going to evolve as these situations get more intense um so yeah so i'm eager to see uh the character from the prologue again and just to see like what's up with that also some of the dialogue in the exorcist is like a little boring, but I think it's meant to be mundane because I think it's supposed to be reflective of like just normal everyday life type situations. Um, but it is a little boring, <laughs> I have to say. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and read um, two more chapters um, of The Exorcist. These are really short chapters, so it's, it's only gonna be like 14 pages. And then I'll come back and we'll talk about this a little bit. And then I, I think I want to read like two more chapters, two more really short chapters um, of this one as well. So we'll do that. Okay, so now I'm on page 64. And the first chapter was about, um, it was a really small chapter about Father Karas, kind of about his kind of his journey from one side of the city to another and the stops that he's making and there's actually some really cool um excerpts here just really visceral stuff it was really really cool there's one part here that says he could not bear to search for christ again in stench and hollow eyes for the christ of pus and bleeding excrement the christ who could not be and then there's another scene where he stops and sees his mother from these he had fled into love, but now the love had grown cold, and in the night he heard it whistling through the chambers of his heart like a lost and gentle crying wind. Like, ooh. And then the next chapter after that, we're like meeting up again with Chris. <laughs> this woman also has like investments in oil in Libya. <laughs> She's living pretty large and in charge, but uh, she ends up taking her daughter Reagan to a doctor uh, because Reagan is not acting normal. And she's beginning to realize that, you know, maybe, maybe there's something up really big with Reagan, but the doctor is kind of like, yeah, let's just try some things out and we'll see how it goes. <laughs> so I think we, we all know where this is heading. So I think I'm going to stop here with the exorcist today. 
and it's a pretty good place to stop and then I'll kind of read this next couple of days. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch back to the Blackstone Chronicles and uh, I'll come back in a second. So I read chapter seven and eight and um, it's funny because both stories feature a few similar themes. <laughs> like we have like a little girl who is uh, a little bit of a brat, <laughs> I guess we could say. So these next two chapters, we're really establishing that the doll is um, up to no good. <laughs> There's something about this doll. We don't know specifically what it is yet, but we know that this doll is doing something, doing something. This whole entire concept of like an object ending up in a certain place and then doing whatever it's supposed to do, whether that's horrifying people or telling a story or presenting some type of mystery that needs to be solved. I love that. That's very cool. So <laughs> totally into that. So um, I will keep reading this. Um, nothing really big has happened. I mean, there are some things, of course, that have happened, but I don't want to give any spoilers. But this little girl, she's, she's definitely like a little brat. Like she's, but I think she's, she might also be suffering from the influence of the doll as well. Like, um, it, it's hard to tell at this point. So I will be stopping here with these two books and I will keep going in the next few days and then do a review on this. So that's it for me. Um, if you liked this video, please like and comment below. Let me know if you've read these two books. Um, and other than that, please take care of yourselves, look out for each other, and I will talk to you next time.